Did you know that we can convert this Excel data into a properly formatted email ready to be sent out in just one click? Well, stick with me to find out. In today's video, we have some order level data from our sales file. What we would like to do is we would like to send a weekly update email with a properly formatted HTML table through Outlook using Python pandas. The file we have gets continuously updated. So let me zoom in a bit. So we have the typical order level information. So this is one line per one transaction. So we have order ID and we have the different information related to it. So the main thing we would be interested in will be total sales. Right, so let's open up our VS code. I'm going to work with IPython notebook. You can simply go to new file and then Jupyter notebook here. If you do not have Jupyter notebook support, you can install the extension for it. And then you should be able to use it like this. If you do not have Python installed, it's very simple. You can do a quick search on YouTube and you will see a ton of results on how to install Python, which is very simple. Just why I'm not making a new video on it. The libraries we will need is pandas and pretty underscore html underscore table. These should be very easy to install. If you do not have these installed, just do start cmd and then just do pip install and just type the library name and it should automatically install it. If you have any issues installing it, let me in the comment section. All right, so let's import our imports. So we have import pandas as pd and then we have or pretty HTML table. So let's load that as well. And then we have import win32 library, which really comes to be installed with Python installation. If you do not have it installed, you can install it the same way using pip install. Let's load the cell and these will load our imports. Now let's declare a new variable called df and we will load the data frame in it. So we do pd draw in read underscore excel. Since our file is in the same directory, we can just give the file name. If you have the file in different location, you will have to give fully qualified reference to the file location. Let's add in the engine in there. I've noticed that in some computers it asks for engine, so it's a good idea to add it instead of having your code crash somewhere. So let's load it and let's look at the head and look at top three rows. Looks like our data is loaded correctly. Next thing we will do is we would like to do some grouping on it. So the grouping is very easy. So anything you want to group is you just type df, the data frame name, and then group by. Now, whatever you want to group by, you will add it here. So for example, if you just want to group by one column, in our case, which is branch, you can add it here. Keep in mind that if you want to add more grouping columns, we need to give a list here. Since it's just one column, we can do without a list, but let's just convert it into a list for good practice. Then you select the column that you want to work on. So for example, we want to group by branch and then we want to select total sales. So we say total. Actually, it should be total sales, but never mind. So we have grouped by branch and then we have selected total column. Now we need to tell Python pandas what to do with it. So let's say if we want to perform a sum on it, we can just simply say sum. And if we do this, we get branch information and then a total column. And then we have a sum for each of these. Great. Let's say we want to expand this a bit and we want to add a bit more information. So let me comment this out and let's write a group by with branch city and product line. And then we will do a total of it. And then we just do a sum of it. So let's press enter. And you can see now it is grouped by three columns. There's branch, city, product line. Once that is done, it accesses the total column and then does a sum on it. Similarly, you can do a mean on it as well. So that's really up to you on what you want to do with it. So for, for our use case, we will keep it at sum. So this is the basic information that we want to be sent through the email. So for example, for branch A, for which we have, let me save and close this file. Let me run this again because I actually made some changes to the Excel file. So I'm gonna clear this and run this again. Okay, I actually changed the column name. So this is actually total sales. I'm going to change this here and this should work. Right, so the data we want to be sent through email is only the data for each branch. So for example, for branch A, we have branch manager Joey. We want to send Joey only this information from here till here. So the data for his branch, then city, product line, and sales for each product line. Similarly, for branch B, we want to only send the related information to him. So let's add some structure for our email data. 
So let's make some declaration. So we define a new object variable that is using the Win32 and then it is using dispatch to launch Outlook.application. So this is going to send emails through Outlook application. If you want to send it through something else, you will need to change it here. Next thing we would like to do is we would like to loop through branch. So since we need to generate three emails, we would like to figure out a way to loop through the three branches. So let me add a new cell here. And we can do that by using a list. So let's def define a new list. We say branch list, branch underscore list. So let's define it. And this can simply be equals to, we can say df. And then we select the branch, my bad. And we can simply say dot unique that that will simply save the three branches in it. So let's run it and we should see a list with A, B and C. Great. Now we have a list to loop over. Let's start our loop. So for branch, I'm just going to say X because uh, we already have branch as the column name. So I don't want this to get mixed up in branch underscore list. So this starts our loop. Let's say we just want to see if our loop is working correctly. We can simply do this. So we run this. This is actually branch X and this should print A, C and B. Great. Means we are able to loop through all of the branches one by one correctly. Great. So let me comment this out and let's start adding more information here. So the first thing we want to do is for each loop, we want to select our subset data using only the branch name. So that we will do is we will define a variable dfx equals. Basically what it's doing is it is selecting only the data in which branch matches the branch x, which in each case, first loop, it will be a, second loop, it will be c, and third, it will be b. So it means that this line will only save the data for relevant branch. Now, what next we need to do is we need to add the grouping here. So let's add the grouping. So we can say group dfx underscore group equals. Now this will be replaced by dfx because we actually now have the relevant data in dfx variable, which we saved here. So for dfx, we group by this and keep in mind that this data is already filtered for the branch. So in our first loop, we only have branch data for branch A. So this group by will only work on branch A. In second loop, it will work for C and for third loop, it will work for B. Great. Now it's the important part where we feed this information to our HTML table. So let's do that. So we declare a new variable. Let's call it HTML table fixed. And this is basically how we can feed this information onto the HTML table. So the build underscore table, this is part of pretty HTML table. You can read more documentation about it. It accepts the data frame name as the first variable. Then you have some bunch of information. So let's add it here. So we tell it the style. So we are using red dark. We have font size and then we give the font family. Next, we create a new variable called new mail and we save the new mail item in it. Next, let's define the subject. So we'll say new mail dot subject equals and here we can use as strings. So we are going to say summary sales data for a branch and we are using square brackets, which will save branch X in it. So branch X will be each value in each loop. So for first loop, it will be A, C and B respectively. We have some default setting here. So we will say body format equals one. And then we will start creating the email body, which is a bit complicated. But if you have worked with HTML tags before, this will be very simple for you. So let me add it. And once done, I will explain it a bit. So going to add the information. So basically this is starting the HTML body. P tag is for paragraph tag. So we say good day. And then we use branch emails. We don't have this variable right now. It should be HTML table. So we add the body information. We add some text. So let's say, please see below summary of sales for a branch and then a thank you. And this creates our email body. The branch emails variable, which this is, we are going to fix. So let's add a new blank row here and let's declare a new dictionary. This is basically supposed to be a dictionary because this will be the name of the person that we are going to send the email to. As you might have noticed that we don't have any email IDs to send this information. So we'll create some dummy email IDs. So for each branch, we'll create an email ID. Let's do that. Creating a dictionary is very easy. You just add in curly braces and it's a key value pairs. So you give key and value 
So let's add branch emails for A. We will add Joey at WMart. And we add a comma. Then we have B colon separated by his email and a comma. And this is how key value pairs work. Great. So let me run this. So far, so good. Let me explain this concept a bit. So if you want to select a specific value from a dictionary, you can simply give the key of it and it will return you the value of it. So for example, if we select this here, it will give Joey at WMart. We can simply add this in a loop in a way where the square bracket has in first iteration A, then C and B. So it will automatically give the value for each key. In branch X, we have A in our first loop. So it will look up A in the dictionary of branch emails and it will return Joey at WMart. So we'll say good day, Joey at WMart, and then we will go from there. Okay, so let's finally add the information on who to send this email to. So we will simply say email dot two, and we'll use the same logic, branch emails, branch X. Let's add the way to display the email. So we say new mail dot display, great. Let me run this code and let's see if we are able to generate this information. The series object has no attribute to HTML. So seems like we have some problem here. Okay, so it's having trouble converting this to HTML. So let's try to see this separately on what data type this is. So this was our grouping. So let's see what the type this is. It's a series. It should be actually a data frame. So let me run this again. And if we do our reset index, we can hopefully convert this back to a data frame. Do that. And let's save this in a temp variable called temp underscore ds. And let's add a new line. And as soon as we run, we want to see this as well. Okay, so this is our data now. The only difference is that previously this was merged into one line, but it's not merged anymore. But I guess this will work as well. So let's try this this way so we add a reset index and let's try to run this again run our code block and great we finally have our result so we have three emails created and with our operation we have a two with the related name joey at wmart now this section we can improve this later so this will only this should only say joey instead of the email id for this one Rest of it, I think it has picked up correctly. So we have branch, city, product line, and total sales. The email signature, you can add some information at the end of it. It's a bit complicated, but what you can do is once you have the display, you can simply say signature and then add your signature there. Click on send. Now let's figure out how we can extract the name from the email address. So let me add a new cell here. We know that this returns joey at wmart. We're going to split by at the rate sign and assume that whatever is behind the at the rate we will simply use that as a name so let's do dot split we'll split by at the rate sign so let's do that and once we run it you can see we now have this split it into two different values so we have joey so before the at the rate sign and after the at the rate sign which was wmart.com to select the first result, we can simply add a square bracket and then do a zero. As Python is zero index based, so let's click on run. And you see we have the correct name of the branch manager. We can even do a step better and we can add a title. That will simply correct the case of it. So let's run it and you will see that J is capitalized for this. We can simply do this for every other branch manager as well. So let's type C. And you can see we have David for B, we should get Bob, which is properly capitalized. So we can simply add this here where it says the name of the branch manager. And let's run this again. And hopefully we should see corrected branch manager names in here. And you can see we have the corrected information. So Bob is correct with capitalized B. Then we have David with capitalized T. And similarly, we have joy with capitalized j in correct format so that's it for this video uh, i hope this is something that is helpful to you and helps you automate with your weekly emails if you have any other ideas you want me to work on you let me know in the comment section till next time happy coding